弟兄们，盼望我们能扫地上来。现在已经六点四。It's 6.20 p.m. We see that the number of saints has increased in the church. So the, announce, the announcements are very important. The, the announcements regarding the, the Tree of Life magazine, regarding the children's meeting service. And of course, this takes time. Actually, I wanted to come up earlier to share the word, but I had to wait. So we are people that live within the boundaries of time. We are restricted by time. But time is very unforgiving. Today I am 97 years old. So I hope that while I am still on this earth, during this short period of time in which I still will be here, I want to continue serving the churches. And up to today, the Lord has not allowed me to stop. And I see that the number of saints has grown in the churches. So in the past we used to have 7,000 people here and we saw this place full. So I hope that the Lord may give us more time so that we may present to the brothers the main points of the Bible. And we may have fellowship with the churches in a very open way. So we are at message number four. So according to the burden that the Lord has shown us, we are seeing the book of Revelation. So we see here the seven churches in Revelation which represent all the churches during all the ages. So we can also say that what is written in these seven epistles to the seven churches includes everything that we have experienced in the Lord's work. May the Lord fulfill in us His burden regarding His work. 
Today, the work is growing. The number of saints has been increasing. So just for the announcements section with the videos, we have practically half an hour. So this is to supply the needs of the churches. It is something that is inevitable. So may the saints forgive us if we spend too much time with these videos. I'm already 97 years old. So there are still three years left for me to complete 100 years old. So I also do not want to complete 100 years old and have to stop. So if the Lord gives me one more day, I want to fulfill my responsibility before the Lord in that day. So the church has had a long history. But there are things in which we need to improve. So this afternoon in the Jasper Room, we had a lot of fellowship regarding the progress of the Lord's work in the churches to find a way for us to progress even more. And the Lord has been speaking to us in this conference. And we are reaching the end of times and the Lord has been speaking to us regarding the seven churches in Revelation. So in these words, the Lord has his final words to the churches. And these seven churches in Revelation do not suffer the local restriction of those seven cities. Actually, they are representative churches. And these seven letters show us matters regarding life for us to be able to advance. So the Holy Spirit has given us this burden to speak regarding the seven churches in Asia. So these are the final words that are in the Bible and they are the final burden of the Spirit to us. And we have already have, we've already have had some messages regarding this subject. So here the Lord reveals us some practices that the churches in Revelation used to have that serve as evidence to teach us some lessons. 
In other words, as churches living in the end times, how should we carry out our work? So here we have seven representative churches that show us the situation of the church in the end. And the first of these churches is the church in Ephesus. And in the past, we have spoken a lot regarding the church in Ephesus. So we can say that the church in Ephesus is the church that used to lead the other churches, used to act as the head. So being the leading church, it should have been in a very good situation regarding the Lord's word. So that is why the Holy Spirit put us, so that is why the Holy Spirit placed these seven churches here in the book of Revelation. So these seven churches are churches that are in Asia Minor. So now I'm going to mention some of these characteristics of these churches. The first church is the church in Ephesus. The second is the church in Smyrna. The third church is the church in Pergamos. Then we see the church in Thyatira. After the church in Thyatira, we have the church in Sardis and so forth. You know the sequence. So this morning we spoke a little bit about the church in Ephesus. So the church in Ephesus occupies a special place in the Bible, especially in these end times. So the Holy Spirit wants to take these seven churches in Asia as a pattern for us. So here we have the record of the situations and special characteristics that each church had regarding the work they used to have. And the sequence of these churches is not a sequence necessarily bound by time. So this order here is based on the spiritual characteristics. It also speaks of the situation of the churches in the end times. And the first of these churches is the church in Ephesus. So these seven churches in Asia were not chosen 
these churches were chosen as representative churches to show us our situation as examples. They're not necessarily bound to the seven cities at the time. So it is not a time-based sequence. So let us follow the verses that are here in the Bible. Yes, the Holy Spirit placed the churches here to be examples to us in order for us to extract lessons from them. So let us follow the sequence that the Spirit has given us and we will follow the same sequence. So we already mentioned this, this morning some aspects regarding the epistle written to the church in Ephesus. The matter of Ephesus being placed here first doesn't necessarily mean that it was more advanced in life. So we need to extract the lessons from which we can learn from in each one of these seven churches in Asia. So there are many spiritual principles here from which we can learn. Anyway, these principles have a lot to do with our experience of life and life. So this is the first church that is mentioned, the church in Ephesus. And then we see the church in Smyrna. So then we see the church in Pergamos. And then the church in Thyatira. And after the church in Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. And because of my age, I do not have the eloquence that I used to have in the past. So my question is, why did the Holy Spirit place the seven churches here to be our example? God chose it in this way. Chose to place the churches in such a way. So we need to understand in a deeper way and to learn the principles that the Spirit wants to transmit to us. Yeah. 
So because Ephesus is in the first place, it shows the importance that it has among the churches. So all that is written here has a lot to do with our experience of life. So let us speak a little bit about the church in Ephesus. And sometimes there seems to be confusion here. So let us improve this. So let us follow the order that is here in the Bible. So let us follow the burden of the Bible. So let us speak a little bit about this, this church in Ephesus. So let us read some portions at the end of the book of Acts. I believe that all of this has to do with the level of growth in life that was in the church. So, in the burden of the Holy Spirit, we see that Ephesus comes in first place. And we have gone, we have um, studied the book of Ephesians quite a bit in terms of understanding the depths of this ep epistle. And in the book of Acts, we see various chapters that describe the church in Ephesus. So, uh, let us look at Ephesians chapter 1, verse 1. Here says, To the saints who are in Ephesus and faithful in Christ Jesus. So in the beginning of the church in Ephesus, here says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, to the saints who are in Ephesus, 
and faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So these are the opening words. These words many times are not taken into proper consideration, but I think that it, is, it is very important because these words are directed to us. Are we faithful in Christ Jesus? So this word is for you. So Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God to the saints who are in Ephesus. So we all know who was Paul. Do you remember how many books we have in the New Testament? And how many books we have in the Old Testament? Regarding this, all of us know. The epistle to the Ephesians is an epistle of much weight in the New Testament. So let us continue reading Ephesians chapter 1. These words definitely were written to us. So the fact that God called us and placed us in the church is a sign of God's mercy toward us. So God wants to give us His life because His life in us needs to grow. And God wants us to receive more of His Word and in this Word to obtain more of His life. And God chose us before the foundation of the earth. This is revealed in chapter 1 that we are chosen before the foundation of the world. And we are chosen in Him. Why did God choose you? Why did God choose me? Of course, all of this was according to God's good pleasure. Pouco a pouco, ele 
foi dando a sua vida para nós, dispensando a sua vida para nós, para que nós fôssemos conformados à imagem. So we were generated to be conformed to the image of the firstborn of God. So in verse 4, we will repeat. Just as He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before Him. So here we have two very important words. First, we were chosen in Christ. The Father chose us in Christ. And a verse 3 says that we were blessed with every spiritual blessing. And verse 4 says that we were chosen. So I believe these two points are important. This is the burden that God has for us. On one hand, He chose us. On the other hand, He predestined us to Him for sonship. Praise the Lord. In the world, there are so many people. Who are we compared to all the people that exist in the world? Among so many people in the world, God chose us. So today everybody is celebrating carnival. They're dancing carnival. But God in midst of so many chose us to be here. Praise the Lord. He chose us. With what objective? so we could receive sonship. So let us read this verse once more. From verse 3 on, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. And we were chosen before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love. So we were predestined and chosen. So before time began, at that time, God had already predestined us. 
tudo isso all this is in God's love God loved us and God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ and God has chosen us for us to be whole holy and without bl blame before Him. So today everybody is out there celebrating Carnival. So we are a minority here. But we are blessed. So we have been granted every spiritual blessing. So we can be holy and without blame before Him. And here we see these spiritual blessings. So here we see regarding the choice, regarding predestination. So here we have sanctification. We were separated. So here we have God's calling. We didn't go after God, but God called us. So here we see the grace of the Lord. So let us read again verse 3. Blessed, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. So what are these blessings? First, He chose us before the foundation of the world. The second blessing, He predestined us for sonship. So could you imagine this? The Lord kept us. So everybody is out there celebrating carnival, but the Lord has kept us and we are here. And the Lord is blessing us. The numbers among the saints has been increasing. So all this is part of the spiritual blessings that the Lord has been giving us. This is because we were chosen before the foundation of the world. So we are chosen before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before Him. 
けど、もめじんどだ。たぶん、せじげすげりじんじんたえたべもしゅかてわもしゃれ。So we people who live in this world can be separated by him for us to be holy and without blame. This is because God has chosen us. So, He chose us for us to be holy and without blame before Him. So, I believe that each one of you have this experience. God chose us. This was not something that occurred by chance. God had already thought had already planned this. So today everybody is in sin, but we here, so we were, we have received God's grace, we have received God's grace, and we are in this place which God prepared, listening to the teachings of the apostles. So Paul had this feeling. That he expresses in verse 2, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So we see that God grants us peace and grace. So on one hand we have the Father, on the other hand we have the Son. And this Son is Christ. And this grace and peace has reached us in the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. So where would we be if the Lord had not called us? We would be out there like everybody. So today we fill this auditorium. Of course, there are some few seated on the upper part. And there are many people serving out there that are, that are not here. So God really has called us and has chosen us and has predestined us for sonship. And He has chosen us to be holy and without blame before Him. So first He, had to, he has to work in us. So we cannot say that we are today are totally sanctified. Do we or do we not have some blemishes and stains? But in love, God wants to make us holy and without blame so that we can be without any stains, without any blame. And He predestined us unto sonship by Jesus Christ to Himself according to the good pleasure of His will. Not only does He sanctify us, but He wants to give us a larger portion of grace. And where is this largest portion of grace? It is in love. 
那个是是我们那个得到荣耀的安迪里面，得到称赞，这样的就是爱子里面。So verse 6 says, To the praise of the glory of His grace, by which He made us accepted in the Beloved. So verse 7 shows us, Why did we receive this grace because the Lord fulfilled redemption through His blood. So verse 6 and 7 says, To the praise of the glory of His grace, by which He made us accepted in the Beloved. In Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace. So we did not have to do anything. Everything was given to us freely. It is not a fruit of our labor, but everything was given to us freely. So this is the riches, these are the riches of His grace that we have received. According to the riches of His grace which He made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence. God chose us. He placed us in the church. It is like the church in Ephesus, and we experience all these things. So through His blood, all of our sins committed before were purified. Think a little bit. You who are seated here, in the past you weren't here. We were in the world like those people sinning, but today we have received grace. We have received grace in the Beloved. As children of God, we do not sin anymore. To the glory of the glory, to the glory of His grace, to the praise of the glory of His grace. So grace means that God gave us His Son freely. So this is to the praise of the glory of His grace. So all this came, comes from His love. By which He made us accepted in the Beloved. Through the blood of the Beloved that was shed on our behalf, we have received the redemption If we were not here today, we would be like everybody out there, still sinning, living in our sins, in our offenses. But today, today God has given Himself to us. This is grace. Grace means that you do not have to pay any price. 
that you did not have to do anything, but this was given freely. This is according to the riches of His grace. So verse 8 says, which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence. How can we receive this? Yes, we have committed sins, we were in our offenses, but today we can enjoy this love and this grace of God. We who used to live in our offenses and sins, God chose us. So God separated us to be holy and without blame before Him. Not only this, but dear saints, He also predestined us to sonship. So, verse 5 says, Having predestined us to ad adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to Himself. So, not only are we chosen, but before being chosen, we were already predestined. So, all this is for the praise of the glory of His grace. That He has given us by which we, by which He has made us accepted in the Beloved. So in the Beloved we have become children of God. But we were dead in our trespasses and sins. So how did God solve our problem? So the Lord shed His blood for us to be forgiven. And we have already applied this blood. This is the Son of... This is the blood of the Son of God that has been given to us. Praise the Lord. Because before the foundation of the world, God had already predestined us for sonship. Oh Lord, to the praise of the glory of His grace. Grace means that you do not have to pay any price, even if you want to. If you want it, it's yours. You may think, I'm not qualified to participate in this meeting. I need grace. I also want to participate with the saints of this grace. Saints, if you want to, once you want it, it is yours. So all your sins and trespasses were hung on the cross with Him. So because of that we are holy and without blame before Him. It is not that we are totally holy or do not have any stains. It is not this, but because of the Lord's love that we are holy and without blame. This is grace. 
So all this is according to the good pleasure of his will. So we are children of God. Praise the Lord. So in these verses, so we see grace here in all these verses. So it means that you do not have to pay any price. You do not need to be a good person. Even though you are a sinner, you opened your heart to receive Him. You confessed your sins. Praise the Lord. And you are already qualified to be His son. Why? Of course, we think that when we sin, we may think that God does not want us anymore. So even before you sinned, the Lord has already saved you. This is a great grace. So this was all given freely in the Beloved. So I want to say once more in verse 7. So what do we have in the Beloved? We have regeneration, redemption. Redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. So we were redeemed through His blood. According to the riches of His grace. So the redemption of sins means that He has cleansed us, purified us. Praise the Lord. So through the blood of the Beloved, we have received redemption and the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace. Saints, so we think we say lord thank you for the grace that i've received this means that you do not need to do anything but you have gone before him you have confessed your sin so your sins were forgiven what what is this it is not you wanted to be somebody or wanted to do something good to do good before God this would be the fruit of your own labor if it is the result of your own effort this is not grace grace means that you were a sinner you were not even willing to confess but even then, God gave you grace. Praise the Lord. So verse 6 says, To the praise of the glory of His grace, he has, by which He had made us accepted in the Beloved. So there are very few verses here, even simple verses, but how much do we how much we can enjoy from these verses? For example, in verse four it says that we are chosen. We were chosen. Antes 
Before the foundation of the world, God had already chosen us. We were chosen to be holy and without blame in Him. All this represents the love of God. And He has predestined us unto Him for sonship. We were sinners. But He took away from us the condition of sinners and has placed us in the condition of sons. So how can such a wonderful thing happen to me? Where, where did my sins go to? I committed so many sins. Where did my sins go to? Very simple. This is to receive God's grace. So in the grace of God, there is an element which is the blood of Jesus that has purified us from all sin. He went to the cross on my behalf and removed all my sins. And He redeemed me from my sins. This means that we have received the redemption, that we have received grace, something unimaginable, something that He has given us freely. I have received salvation through Christ's death when I was still a sinner. This is something that we cannot even imagine. So here it says in verse 7, in which we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace. Praise the Lord. So the redemption that we have received is fruit of grace. So grace is us receiving salvation without having had to pay any price, but the Lord has left everything prepared. So this requires a lot of wisdom and prudence. So we thank the Lord that here in the carnival holidays we are here saved. We are here free from sin. And we may think, oh, but the sins that I committed before, the Lord has already purified from all of them. So how can we imagine such a mystery? All this all this is according to the good pleasure of His will. So when we see that the dispensation of the fullness of the times 
he might gather together in one all things in Christ. So we are reading these verses in Ephesians. So from verses 1 through 7, we see so many riches. So here we see God's selection. We see his predestination. We see the calling of God. So we see here the grace of God. We see the mercy of God, the grace of God once more. And here we have all the wisdom and prudence of God. This is a mystery. This mystery was hidden, but it was revealed to us. Before, because of our sinful condition, we used to be excluded from the presence of God. We were dead in our trespasses and sins. But now, all of this has passed. In Christ Jesus, we were redeemed and saved. We praise the Lord. Verse 11, In Him also we have obtained an inheritance. We were made inheritance of God. So only this verse 11, we see that we have so much to enjoy here. Is this, is this sufficient for us to enjoy in terms of grace and riches? You sinned, but He shed His blood for you and has granted grace to you. Now you have obtained sonship, the condition of son. So really this is so rich, this is full, this is the fullness of God. What do you think, saints? Praise the Lord. So since we have such an enjoyment, so let us fill our heart with thankfulness, thanking the Lord because He has given us this grace for free. Before we used to sin, it is not that you wanted to sin purposefully, but you used to sin occasionally. He has given us grace and had made, has made us holy and without blame. So these verses that we read are in Ephesians chapter 1. So I believe that they are enough for our enjoyment now. So let us enjoy these verses. So if the Lord allows, tomorrow we will continue. We will speak more of the fullness of His grace. More grace, more grace. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus is Lord. Amen. So let us stand up and share this word in small groups.